So hi, Mr. Dave Rossum. Howdy. Uh, we're here in the media booth um, because you're here in a different guise this year. You're not uh, displaying with Rossum this year. You're on the sound semiconductor booth. Yeah, right? I'm spending most of my time there. I'm, of course, here in the show with all my various hats on at different times. And uh, um, uh, But uh, I've been spending a lot of time with sound semiconductor because we've been doing some really exciting things. And uh, talking to the customers is always a lot of fun there as well. So um, tell us a bit about uh, what exactly Sound Semiconductor is, because it's kind of a development from uh, SSM, right? That's exactly right. Um, you know, back in the um, early 70s, Ron Dow got in touch with me, and uh, um, uh, we eventually teamed up and uh, designed the synthesizer chips that went in the first Rev Profits, uh, the uh, very famous SSM chips. Um, Sound Semiconductor went on to go into the um, professional audio business um, and eventually was acquired by Precision Monolithics and then ultimately by Analog Devices. Um, and uh, um, I, of course, continued on with my primary job at EMU Systems and ultimately Creative Labs. Um, so come around 2016, I think the story has been told of my uh, uh, realizing I, I did about five years stint designing chips for cell phones and realized how much I missed being involved in the music industry. Uh, got together with Marco Alpert and uh, um, a little bit of seed capital from Universal Audio and started Rossum Electro Music. And at our first visit to the NAMM show, where we were really prospecting with the idea of Rossum Electro Music as to exactly what market we wanted to go into, we stopped by a uh, uh, booth uh, for Groove Tools, uh, Dan Parks, who used to run SSM, well, ultimately SSMT, uh, with all those chips, was there. And we said, you know, we're getting back into this industry. And Dan said, well, that's interesting. And I, I, I said, you know, do you think we might want to start designing chips again? You know, people would like, I get emails from people that would like to see those chips resurrected. And Dan, I don't know whether he quite said, let me think about it, but uh, uh, over the next six months or so, he started thinking about it and got in touch with uh, our other uh, head designer, Derek Bauer, who's a far more brilliant chip designer than I am, and uh, uh, everybody seemed to think it was a good idea. So we uh, started Sound Semiconductor, and uh, um, that was the beginning of this current run of chips, which includes both some uh, uh, resurrections of the classic SSM chips and some really pretty wonderful new ideas. So what, what is it about some of those kind of classic chips that really makes them special? So today so much is done in the digital domain um, that people are, really can hear the difference uh, unless it's ridiculously well done uh, between straightforward digital processing and the old analog signal processing um, using uh, op amps, discrete transistors, and then when the SSM chips came out, uh, analog ICs. Uh, the thing about analog is that um, no chip is exactly alike. Uh, digital chips are designed to do exactly the same thing every time. Um, analog chips, by their very nature, um, uh, have variations from unit to unit, and lots of times the designer's job is to make those variations as small as possible, but you can never make them zero. And they give instruments, each one has a, its own individual character. And the other thing that I like to explain to people is that when you make a mistake in it or take a shortcut in a digital algorithm, odds are it's not going to sound very good. It's going to give you something called aliasing, which, uh, well, some people really like the sound of aliasing in, in vintage gear, Overall, our ears find it objectionable, whereas the kind of distortions that happen in the analog world are, because it's analog, it's natural, it sounds natural to our ears, and while it may not sound perfect, it sounds interesting. So that's why people, I believe, love analog circuitry and um, why analog chips are becoming more and more important again. So is that something that you particularly enjoy um kind of designing analog <laughs> chips as opposed to doing like digital things. You said obviously you designed chips for cell phones and decided that that wasn't for you. Um, is kind of more analog design much more enjoyable? 
Uh, so I do enjoy d designing digital chips, but uh, analog, really, it's a very special design skill. Uh, it's much more artistic. You know, uh, I think people know I'm not a musician. I can't express myself in my, uh, uh, my art with music. I do express it with my instrument designs and so on. But um, with analog chips and things like that, I really, uh, the joy of, of creation is so much greater. So I do absolutely, that's why I grinned when you said it, uh, I do very much love doing analog design, even though um, you know, I understand that, that very often I can be more cost effective in terms of getting capability in the musician's hand digitally. And um, that's sort of my specialty, and I think it's one of the reasons uh, uh, my design skills are, are very much in demand, is that I'm equally at home in both the digital and the analog worlds and can cross over and make algorithms that require aspects of both areas. And that's fairly rare in the, in the design world, so uh, you know, that's one of my specialties. So um, you've, got some, uh, you've got something here that is one of the, is this, this is a newer design, right? Uh, yeah, these are all the, the sound semiconductor designs. I just picked out a few things so that I could uh, tell folks the sort of things we're doing. Um, a uh, uh, example, uh, you'll see SSI 2140. Uh, this is the new chip that replaces the SSM 2040 that was that classic filter sound that was made so popular in the first, uh, the Rev1 and Rev2 Prophet 5s. Um, it has a unique character, uh, very much beloved, uh, and people really wanted to hear that filter again. We um, redesigned it for sound semiconductor. We have uh, a better process now. It's more uh, uh, reproducible. It's a, you know, it's a very mature process, um, the semiconductor process. And also, rather than those being, uh, those were semi-custom chips, these are full custom chips, so we can do whatever we want. And that enabled me to add a lot more features that would have been wonderful to go back in the original uh, SSM 2040, such as actually doing the temperature compensation of the filter so that it doesn't have any drift that has to be compensated in the circuitry of the filter. I could make things lower noise by using, I can ch choose the geometry of transistors that go in there. And also, uh, um, you know, we've learned some things about topologies people want, so this is a, a very flexible chip particularly in, in terms of how you're going to add resonance to it, how you can compensate, do what we call Q compensation in the filter. So it preserves that exact same sonic quality. The basic filtering cell in this chip is exactly the same as the original SSM 2040, and uh, people who have heard it uh, agree with me on that. It's, I'm not just making that up. But we've uh, um, done our best to uh, fix all the little warts that were in the original chip as well. We also have just uh, a great department in, at, at SSI in terms of uh, writing up the spec sheets. You can see we've got much more details than the old uh, SSM chips do. We can tell what's inside the chip and give lots and lots. I'm skipping a lot of pages here. Uh, so we've got really good documentation. Uh, uh, SSI is a much, well, all of us involved have learned an awful lot. We know how to do best-in-class spec, spec sheets as well as best-in-class chips. So um, um, if you were a designer now and using these chips in comparison to, you know, back in, in the day when these, like the 2040 came out and stuff like that, uh, do you think that these, this new documentation would allow you to, you know, do much more with the instrument that you were designing? That, that's our goal, is, is uh, to really uh, be able to inform so many people. And these chips are very popular in the Eurorack community where there's a lot of experimenters, DIYers, things like this. By uh, giving these folks all the information we can, we can encourage their creativity to take you know, my creativity and, and Derek's uh, in the chips and um, do what I love for people to do with my, musicians to do with my instruments. I also love for, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, folks that are designing now to do with my chips, which is figure out some way to use it that uh, wasn't what I thought of. Um, and that's, again, a wonderful thing about analog chips is because the signals going in or coming out are analog, you can do little tricky things that will have a, a, a subtle but uh, a vital impact on the sound. Um, that's much harder to do when you've got a, a dedicated digital signal processing chip, uh, things like that. Great. So um, you've also got uh, this other one. This is the oscillator, right? Yeah, this, um, this is an example of one of our new designs. This chip was designed by uh, uh, Derek Bowers, um, the other uh, 
major chip designer for us right now. Um, as I say, Derek is one of the most brilliant people I've ever met in my life. He can run rings about me in terms of uh, a circuit design. Uh, this filter is, uh, this oscillator is by far the most stable, uh, wide range, accurate voltage control oscillator ever built, chip or not. Um, the, the circuitry is just amazing. Um, I have worked closely with Derek on the circuitry and uh, 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 once in a while caught him. <laughs> uh, 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 helped him out a little bit, uh, been a real contributor as well. Um, but this is an example of the new chips that we're doing. This is not based on an original SSM chip. And while the goal of it is very similar to the, the uh, Doug Curtis's uh, 3140, his uh, landmark temperature stabilized VCO, uh, this goes a step further. It uh, um, uses different techniques than what D Doug did in his chip. Uh, Derek uh, didn't want to step on Doug's toes or Doug's legacy at all, uh, although um, I, was, I was good friends with Doug as well. We, we, you know, while we were competitors, we, were, uh, we really appreciate each other's talents. I was very disappointed, actually, that Doug wasn't able to join the SSM team for various reasons. We didn't get to work together as much as we could. But I did design chips with Doug. At any rate, so this is an example of a, a brand new design. Uh, again, very thick documentation here. It's a fantastic chip. And this allows people to build synthesizers with analog oscillators that are uh, sonically um, every bit as qualified to be musical instruments. They'll have the, the required accuracy, but they'll also have that warmth and um, just the analog nature that a VCO brings that uh, is going to be really difficult for an engineer to simulate in the digital technology. And speaking of you know, the support we've got, um, this chip in particular, this 2130, the, the full chip you can see is, is a, a many pin package. I think this is a 32 pin package. Uh, yeah. So it's this little tiny beast right here. And we want to support the DIYers and prototyping. So we sell this so that you can actually prototype on this chip using through hole technology. You can get these chips on the carriers from us and either do your prototyping or if you want to do through whole production, you actually can put these even in production with this type of technology uh, in, a, in a small volume product or a kit product type of thing like that. We also have for our various uh, products, and this is also for the oscillator, we have them for a number of our products, uh, evaluation boards, which we can sell either fully stuffed with components uh, if you don't want to do that, or we can sell it with just the surface mount chip mounted on it. And these give uh, uh, beginning designers and, and even sophisticated designers the chance to be able to play with the chip, learn what it can do, find out if it's right for them, and um, you know, cut and hack if they want, and, and, and try those crazy ideas that I was encouraging. Brilliant. Well, Dave, thank you very much for sitting down and talking to us. Oh, you're very welcome. It's always enjoyable to talk to you, Ed. Thank you. Cheers.